My name is Anam, and welcome to a live learning session with Ignited Labs. Today, we'll be learning how to use Verge 3D, which is a plugin for Blender, to make interactive animations. Interactive animations are great because they are very engaging and can make learning better for students and teachers. So let's take a look at some examples. So here we got a electricity experiment. And what's great is that we can move around the scene, rotate, zoom in, and then we have these buttons where we can change around uh, the objects in the scene. And then once we get it configured like we want, we can click this button and see how the experiment runs. You can also uh, use it to look at advanced mechanisms like an engine. Again, we can look around it. And then we can turn it on at low, medium, and high speeds as well as drag this to take a look at the pistons and the combustions. Finally, we have another example, and this time it's of a toad. Looks pretty realistic. And we can also uh, learn about each of the body parts of the toad through this. So yeah, the possibilities are pretty endless with this. Um, in this tutorial, I'll be going through a basic example to get you into Verge 3D. And then I'll give you the tools to make something like this, which I made. Which again, you can click buttons to animate. And I've also created an information button that provides text that describes the process he's used to make it walk as well as objects that highlight the variables in a video that highlights the motors. So yeah, let's get started. So what you want to do first thing is, of course, download and install Verge 3D. So if you just Google Verge 3D, this should be like the first result. And we click Try Verge 3D now. And we want to download the Verge 3D for Blender. Uh, on whatever operating system you're using, then you'll pull up an executable, run that, and it should download the plugin for you. So all you have to do is then go to Blender, open whatever random scene, go to Edit, Preferences, and search up Verge 3D. Here it is. You'd want to check this box. Mine's already checked because I already did this, but yours will be unselected. So just check that and you're ready to go. Back outside of Blender, you'll also notice that this Verge 3D app will have downloaded onto your uh, home screen. So open that up and it'll bring up this window in your browser. Uh, sometimes it might not work on an older browser like Internet Explorer. Uh, so if you're having problems with these later steps that I'll get into, uh, make sure that you go to your computer settings and change the default browser to Google Chrome and everything should operate smoothly. <clears throat> but here's the uh, main window where you can see the apps that you have installed. You can run them by clicking this blue button you can open the Blender scenes. You can open the coding window, the project folder, and you can publish it onto the Verge network for sharing. Uh, keep an eye on this folder because it will be referred to later. And you will want to save everything here, including your Blender files, uh, your images, and your videos, if you have any. So another thing to notice is on the left here, you have a bunch of options. You can open up the asset store and they have a bunch of free demos for you that you can use to explore more possibilities. 
uh, by clicking, of course, this launch app. But you can also download all the project files and it'll show up here and you can look at everything, including the code, which is pretty helpful. So let's start by creating a new app and you can name it whatever you want and select the template and uh, select what modules uh, in case, for example, you're not going to use physics, you can deselect that. Uh, but let's just leave everything selected and create it. So now you'll see it here. And what's it going to look like if we run it? It's just this simple default scene of a shiny cube. And of course, you can move around the scene, rotate, zoom in. Uh, but it's not very interesting right now. So let's go ahead and add some stuff to the Blender scene. Let's keep this window open because we're going to be uh, taking a look at it again multiple times. So let's open the Blender scene now. Cool, so typical Blender scene. Let me turn on my screencast key so you know what I'm doing in this corner. All right, so I'm not gonna really go into too much of how to use Blender. There's plenty of tutorials online and it's a bit of a learning curve, so it'll be too much for just one video, but it's a great community. I highly recommend looking up some tutorials on YouTube and you'll be able to learn it pretty quickly and anything you want, you can learn there. So let's go ahead and add something else. Let's add this monkey. And then let's also add a modifier to it. So we can add some more monkeys. Can't have too many. All right. So there's that. Uh, now let's say I want to export it, file export, and verge 3D GIT file. Make sure it saves as the name of your project uh, that we created earlier. So my house map and export. Take a second, depending on the size of your project, and then should be ready to go. So we'll go back to this window. The neat thing is you can just refresh this and our changes should appear. Now we see one monkey, but we don't see the other one, which is a bit confusing. So what we did was we missed uh, a render property. So we'll go to render properties here and we'll go to bake modifiers. It means it'll just make sure the modifiers are exported. So now, if we export it, and refresh this scene, there we can see now we have two monkeys. Cool. Still, there's no animation. So let's add something simple. Add a location keyframe right here, and then move forward, we'll say 10 frames, and another keyframe here. So now we'll just move up like that. Let's change the end timeline to just how much we need and go ahead and export that. All right, cool. So now our animation is playing, uh, except it's looping. And that's kind of annoying. And there's no interaction yet. So at this point, we're ready to start coding it. Let's go back to this window here and open this edit puzzles button. So here's your coding scene. As you can see, you can see what the render will look like in real time here, which is pretty helpful. And then on the left here, you have your coding blocks. So luckily you don't really need to know how to code. All these blocks can be dragged onto this dotted white window here and connected with each other to make some really simple but uh, advanced programs, simple in the way it's made. Uh, so 
let's immediately just stop this animation because it is annoying me. So stop animation and drop down Suzanne, which is what these monkeys are called. And then let's go ahead and run that. So now our animation is stopped. It was good. Now let us add an event. So we'll do this when clicked. Um, we'll do, let's do the cube, which is this. And then we can do uh, <clears throat> play animation. And Suzanne. So now if we run this, click this, the animation will play. Again, it's looping. So let us get rid of that and delete that also. I'm just trying to stop it. Okay, there we go. Now let's go back again to the animation and do that. But instead of just leaving like this, we can click on this gear icon and add some more options. Let's do advanced playback. Uh, so we'll do Suzanne, and we'll do the keyframes that are runs. And we'll do um, loop once instead of auto, which will repeat it. And again, we can go to this gear icon and do the when finish slot. So that once it plays once, We'll do another play animation. Let's get rid of this one, finish do. We'll click the reversed option. So now, play this, click this. It'll play once, go back to its original position, and it's ready to be clicked again. So yeah, and that's generally the workflow for that. Pretty neat, let's go ahead and save that. Now, let's take a look at something more complicated, which was this robot scene I made. You can find this model online on a site like CG Trader or Turbo Squid, Sketchfab, GradCAD, something like that. And a lot of them paid for it, but a lot of them are free. It's pretty nice. And it's got a royalty free license. So we are okay to use it. Luckily, this one is downloadable as a .blend file, but we can also download uh, .obj, .stl, .fpx files and import those into Blender. So what I did was download this, and then I went to project folder, and I just replaced the automatically created one and I replaced that with the downloaded version and just renamed it Spot Robot. So let's take a look at that file. So, and I, here's the robot and I rigged it with an inverse kinematics rig. Um, and then I also added these helpful angle visualizers and I also added this screen, which currently is blank, but that's where the video projects. Let's take a look at the shading node for that one. If you want to uh, replace an image with a video uh, for an interactive animation, this is the node setup you'll need. So I sorted uh, this plane and these angles into a walk info collection just to make it easier to sort and then everything else is in the main collection um so one major thing to note with this is that with inverse kinematics if you just exported the inverse kinematics rig into verge the animation won't play. And that's because Verge 3D currently does not support inverse kinematics. Now, there is a way to code it in. And this is cool because you can have a dynamic inverse kinematics rig. 
problem is uh, you actually have to do some pretty complicated coding. So a way to avoid that is by baking in the animation. Let's take a look at how to do that in this uh, simplified uh, file. So again, uh, the inverse kinematics rig. Um, but if I exported this, it wouldn't work. So what you have to do is select your rig, go to pose mode, make sure all your bones are selected, then go to pose, animation, bake action. My animation runs from zero to 55, so that's good. And then select visual keying and clear constraints. So once you do that, now you'll see there's a bunch of uh, keyframes here. And actually, if we go to object mode and try to control it, and now it's not uh, linked to inverse kinematics. And each of these bones uh, now actually has a keyframe, whereas before with inverse kinematics, only the base bone would have a keyframe. So once you export this, everything should play, which is good. With my uh, interactive animation, I included these buttons and this text. Uh, this test text is not an object like this, which again, in the render properties, when you're rendering this, make sure you bake the text. Uh, with this text, it's just an HTML element. Uh, so what I noticed is that you'll want to create transparent images if you're going to publish it. If not, you can just create whatever images you want. Uh, but I'll show you how to make some transparent images. So for the text, what I just used was this cooltext.com. You can type, type your text here, choose your font, remove the colors and shadows if you want, which I did, and then create the logo so it'll be transparent. And then for this, uh, these buttons, I just used an, an Adobe Express logo creator. So that's cool. Let's take a look at the code now. So uh, let's go to this puzzles. And you can see the code here. So again, I'm stopping all the animations. And I'm also hiding that walk info collection I created, which contains uh, the angles and the plane for the video. And I'm creating this variable um, to identify the visibility state of this collection. So right now it's false because it's not visible. To create a variable, you just go to the variables tab, click on this create variable and type in your variable name and you'll have options you can do with it. Also at the beginning, I am uh, setting the walk video variable to the marionette vid, which again is my project file folder. It's just a video I recorded. Um, and I'm doing that so that I don't have to type this in again a bunch of times. And I'm also replacing the texture on the plane, which is this image in that planes material video. If you go to here and we look at materials, you see I have the video material. So I'm replacing that with the Valk video. So immediately there's a video now there. And now I'm going to create the buttons. So these are all found in the HTML uh, section. So first I create the identifier and then I'm just positioning it, uh, including its height, width, uh, and I am defining the image as the walk logo that it created, which again is in the file folder. Do the same for the uh, question mark button and the text. Uh, so the text is hidden because I have set the width at the beginning to zero pixels. Uh, this will be changed later, but we'll get into that. So on the event of clicking uh, this walk button, which is in the HTML tab. Uh, I'm gonna play these animations. Again, I'm reversing them after they play once. 
just so everything returns to its initial position. And I'm also playing the walk video, which is found in the video tab. And then on the events of clicking this question mark, I'm going to check the visibility state. So if the walk info collection is already visible, meaning I've already clicked this, then I'm going to hide everything and then reset the visibility. Uh, but if not, if the walk info collection is not visible, I'm going to show it and then change the variable to true and then change the width so that you can actually see the info text. So yeah, that's how everything works there. In conclusion, making interactive animations with the Verge 3D plugin for Blender is a great way to make engaging learning and presentation tools. I hope you learned a lot uh, from this video. I'll include some helpful links in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or visit Ignited Labs in person at Arizona State University. Thanks for watching.